Hello, welcome. Hi, everyone. This is Patty Bennett, and today we are going to look at all the tips I have for you for shading these beautiful Easter lilies. Aren't they just gorgeous? And I really think you're going to be amazed and you're going to love how easy they are to make. So that's my goal. <laughs> if you are watching live, welcome. It is Friday, March 22nd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You might also be watching a replay on my blog, on Facebook, on YouTube. That's fabulous as well. So wherever you are, wherever you're watching, whatever time it is, Whatever day it is, could you just please say hi in the comments so that I know that you're here and I will get started in about one minute. So if you're watching live, you're going to see that live button up in the corner. But if you are watching a replay, please skip ahead just a little bit because you don't need to just sit through all of the hellos <laughs> unless you want to. I mean, you're welcome to. We have fun here greeting everyone. Hey, Anne. Anne is all the way from Alaska joining us, and Christine is watching from Australia. Oh my goodness. Well, if we don't have like two opposite ends there, that's amazing, right? I love that. Oh, thank you. Christine is saying, congratulations on my $3 million achievement. Thank you. Yes. While I was in Houston last week at the Stampin' Up! on stage event, we used to call it convention, you know, back in the day in the dark ages, but it's now called on stage. And I did achieve my $3 million in personal career sales with Stampin' Up at that event. So it was very exciting to celebrate with 2,000 friends. <laughs> you don't often get that opportunity. <laughs> hey, Mary Ellen in Montana. Mary's joining. Sonia's here. Robin's here. Hello, everyone. Yes, thank you so much, everybody. Hi, Polly and Margaret. So today we are going to be looking at these beautiful Easter lilies. I have tips for showing you how I shaded them with my blending brushes. So um, you can either use the large or small. I'm probably going to, going to use the small today. And then I'll show you how to assemble them because I have a couple of tips about how I put all the pieces together that I want to share with you. Hello, Shan and Margaret and Mary and Jenny and Tammy and Elaine. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So happy you are here. So I think we're at the top of the hour. I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com with crafty ideas and tips and projects for you. I have 6,000 blog posts for you. So if you're looking for inspiration, you can go there and use the search button on my blog if you know a stamp set or a technique that you might be looking for. If you need Stampin' Up! supplies, I do have an online store with Stampin' Up! But the easiest way to get there is pattystamps.com forward slash shop. Our products today are in the current mini catalog. So we have a catalog that runs January to April. And on page 26, you'll see the Easter Lilies stamp set and the coordinating dies. So I have used this bundle today. I'll show you those. And then, like I said, give you the tips for... Um, shading them. So while we have everybody joining, I'm just going to lay this here in case you want to grab a screenshot. These are the colors of cardstock and ink that I used for the flowers, and these are the four greens that I used for the leaves. So I'm going to get my hands out of the way in case you want to take a screenshot of that, and then I'll show you how I assembled these flowers. Hey, Shannon and Denise. Hi, Tracy, Diane, Lori, Kathy, Robin. Oh my goodness, Bev, Kelly, Mary. We had so many people just jump on. Hi, Donna. Welcome, everyone. So glad that you're here. So I will refer back to this, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to see the colors that we're using. And you can see up here, I have my little dishes with my pre-cut pieces. So I wanted to just give you a little bit of an overview of 
how I made these flowers. So this is the set of dies. Let me just move these over a little bit so I can lay this out and show you. So the pieces that I used out of the die set are these three for the flower and then these two for the die cut leaves or you can stamp and die cut this leaf and then this is the little center stamen pieces. So those are the pieces I used and I'll just grab this one and show you. So you'll need one of those. I'm sure you can actually make this really any way you want to. This is how I made it. And then two of these pieces. So that's this one. I used two. I noticed in the catalog that they only did one, but I liked this flower just a little bit more full. And so I used two of those and then the leaves. So we have just all those colors I showed you. I die cut lots of different leaves and I'll show you how I colored those and used those. So that's what you're going to grab if you want to make them like I did. You can experiment and you can make them in different ways. So totally up to you, but if you'd like to copy what I did, then that's what you'll want to die cut. And then I used Stampin' Up! ink and a blending brush to give them some color. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, and by the way, if you want to stick around to the end today, I am just going to briefly, briefly mention the new catalog that we got at OnStage, show you a little sneak peek of some in colors. We'll chat about it just for a minute at the end if you want to stick around. Alrighty, so those are the pieces. So here's an example of the bubble bath cardstock and what I created with that. This, this pair of cards right here were Lemon Lolly. This one I used uh, Petal Pink and also you can see the darker one, that's Calypso Coral. And then this one, this is actually the first one I made. I want to show you something I tried, but I found that it really wasn't necessary. And it was actually a kind of a waste of product, but it was a fun experiment. I actually die cut those floral pieces out of these two cards. These are the Memories and More cards, and uh, they come with the envelopes. I thought, oh, look at all those colors that I have to work with to start out with. And so I had die cut these out of that but really once you're done kind of giving it shading and whatnot I I decided it was a little bit of a waste of those cards it was probably much more economical just to do it right out of the card stock and if you're curious out of a half a sheet I was easily able to get the supplies for three flowers so if you're just trying to kind of budget and figure out how you might want to or you know if you want to make these and how much do you need or how many to cut whatever you could probably puzzle it in here maybe get four but I think three is is pretty safe I just saved that just to show you just you know in case you're interested so let's go ahead and start shading with the ink and I'll show you what I did. And really this is so simple. And I think you're just gonna say like, wow, I'm, okay, number one, I'm glad I watched this. And number two, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> and I did just organize my ink in a little tray today just so I can show you quickly without reaching over the camera over and over. So I am going to use Berry Burst and Melon Mambo with the Bubble Bath cardstock. And I'm going to start with the lighter and then as needed I will add a little bit of the darker, the berry burst. Hi Patricia and Stacy. Hello everybody. Welcome. Hi now. Thank you Marcella. So sweet of you. Thanks everybody. Hi Ruth and Rhonda. 
All right, so as you know, I just like to kind of swirl with my blending brush and I always test on my scrap paper or my glass mat. I prefer ink blending on my glass mat, but if you've seen me mention before, my phone, which I'm filming with up here, is old. It's three years old. That's old for, you know, technology these days. And somehow the camera on it does not like the grid and the glass of the glass mat. I am going to get a new phone very soon. My husband and I are going to go get phones soon. But for now, you'll just see me using the little piece of grid paper, which seems to be okay. All right. Anyway, sorry, back to this. So what I kind of found was that I liked to put some color towards the tips and then sort of just down the side like this. And you've noticed, like I said, I'm using colored cardstock. I figured if I used white, I'd have to add color first and then add a second color. But this way, by using or starting with colored cardstock, I've already got like two colors right off the bat. I've got my cardstock color and my ink blending color. So that's why I did that. You can use white, not a problem. You just might have to add bubble bath ink and then add a darker ink if you want to replicate this look. So again, I'm just starting here at the tips and staying away from that center so that I still have kind of a light portion. There's probably, you know, a million and three ways to do this. This is just what I tried. I liked it and I went with it. I'm going to leave that one kind of lighter. Okay, and then on these, since these pieces go down at the bottom, I elected to do the dark here because this was kind of the part that was maybe folding in toward the center. And I left this outside part lighter, like it would be getting, it would be, the light would be hitting it, but the shadow would be down here in this darker part. So there you go. That's what I did to start with. And then I thought, well, I want just like a little bit more contrast. So I went to Berry Burst, which is a little darker, and I'm just going to use this same uh, blending brush. It's really not going to hurt it. It's not going to hurt the pad. I'm not going to worry about it. So let me, hang on, let me get a white so that you can see. So then if I add some berry burst on top of the melon mambo, do you can you see? I hope this is showing. Do you see how it's just adding an extra darkness to that, an extra bit of color? And I hope if you do have a glass mat that you will try this on the glass mat. I really must say that it turns out really gorgeous. Uh, there's something about the extra ink that would be here on the glass mat that just flows onto your cardstock. I think it turns out better, but yeah, we'll try it when I get my new phone and see if it works a little better with the glass mat. <laughs> All right, so just a little bit there on the tips just to give it some extra, extra. Okay, isn't that pretty? And I just love that starting with the bubble bath, I've already got that beautiful base and it saves me some time. Okay, so those are the pieces. Oh, thank you, Janet, for the congratulations. I appreciate it. Um, I don't think this bundle is carrying over. So this is going to be something that you're going to want to get soon. And um, so unfortunately, uh, was it like two-ish weeks ago when I blogged all these cards? A few hours after they were on my blog, the dies 
became unavailable. They sold out. They are coming back, I believe, in about 10 days. It's sometime early in April. I forget the exact date. They are coming back, but I don't know that they are going to last long. So I'm sorry that this, they're not available for um, Easter. Uh, you know, it's sad, but at least if you have them, you can make these. And if you want to get them in April, you can. So the next, it is retiring. Thank you, Tammy. Yeah, but I know it's coming back next week, so it'll be available a little bit, right? Yes, Jacqueline, that's true. The So Jacqueline was mentioning, and I don't know if you are all familiar with the color theory um, of colors, but this is a warmer pink and this is a cooler pink. And by combining them, you get that great mix of color with the cooler bubble bath. So this goes with the bubble bath and this warms it up a little. And I know my husband looks at me like I'm nuts when I try to tell him stuff like that, but it's true. I mean, it's it's part of color. Anyway, so then what I did, because I think lilies often have little spots in them, is I took my Berry Burst and my Melon Mambo Stamp and Blend Marker and I did the little flicking thing. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a really great way to just add a little something something to any of your projects. So I'm doing both colors and they will kind of fade into the, the cardstock as it sits. So if you think like, oh my gosh, you just... That was a lot right there. Don't worry. It kind of fades in as it dries, as the alcohol dries. And that was the sum total of what I did to color my pink flowers. Okay. If you read my blog post, you'll know the tip, one of the tips, one of the tips I gave was to curl these. So just as if you were going to do curling uh, ribbon, you know, the skinny little ribbon that you can curl into little spirals. You want to do the same motion. So this goes, the bone folder goes under, my thumb is on top, and I'm just pulling gently because you don't want to pull a petal off. Okay, I'm just, hang on, I'm just kind of break, breaking down that fiber first and then curling because if you pull too hard, they'll come apart. Okay, so you want to give each piece some dimension. And then the way I built it was to put the, the double, the two, the V, whatever you want to call this, down first and grabbed dimensionals. And I know you're gasping, what? She's not using foam adhesive sheets? Well, for this, it just worked great to do a dimensional on this little circle-y part and then you line up this little circle-y part right on top of it. So that's the first part. And do you see how it's nice and dimensional? I love that. And then I added another dimensional on top of that same circle-y area. And I did one of these, I don't know, whatever they are, the smaller one towards one direction and then because I didn't want this like super thick this would be really 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 thick I did not add another dimensional I just added some glue oh I forgot to put the the center these things in darn it shoot 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 I wasn't thinking um so I think what I'll do is instead of pulling well I can pull this apart right? Do you think I can? If I just stick my pokey tool under there, I think we can get it apart. Yep. Okay. So gently. Okay. <laughs> so don't forget your center part. You can do this in any color, any, you can color it with blends. You can color it with um, your blending brush. You can use colored cardstock, like whatever you want. On this one, I actually die cut it out of Lemon Lolly and I colored the tips with, um, I think it was the Dark Daffodil marker. 
You can do whatever you want. Now, I think in real life, and I really should have looked this up, I think that these things are usually either kind of a darker reddish or in the beginning when the flower is first coming out, sometimes they're this greenish. So I'm just going to live on the edge there and I am going to make them green. Uh, you know, maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing, but this is my project and I can make it however I want. <laughs> so now we'll go back to putting those two pieces on. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I think these are so gorgeous. I just love these. So let's color a couple of leaves. You've probably guessed already. You probably don't even need me to show you this. But I'm going to grab, let's see, how many colors? I know I did four, but that's three. Where's, oh, this one. There's the other color. There, those are the four colors I used. So if you missed the beginning, these are the colors I used for the flowers, and these are the colors I used for the leaves. No real rhyme or reason. You know, you just kind of do what floats your boat, what you like. You can do whatever you want. But I did basically the same thing where I just used my blending brush and added some extra color to the tip. This is Parakeet Party. You can do whatever you'd like. I'm just going to add it to all, to all of those. It's not going to show up on here, though, so I need to grab my Granny Apple Green to go on the Granny Apple Green. Hi, Andrea. Hello, Kay. Thank you. I'm glad you make this. Yes, the Stargazer Lilies. Yes, you can make them look like whatever you'd like. It's your project. It's your piece of artwork, and you can do whatever you want with it. Let's do a little bit darker right here. And then, just like I did with the lily, I used my green marker, Stampin' Blends marker, and I flicked some spots. I think that's probably going to be a little light for you to see. Let me grab my granny apple. Hopefully that, yeah, that'll show up for you. Just gave it a few speckles. So can you see those? They, they just have so much dimension now. They have several colors happening in there, just like in real life. And then they have a little bit of speckles. And one thing I loved to use on my cards, do you remember these backgrounds that I did with the baby wipe technique and the ink refills? So I just thought, oh my gosh, that just like screams spring and Easter. And I thought... That's just so beautiful. And you can arrange however you'd like. You can be a florist. I always wanted to work in a florist. Um, at a florist. I always thought that would be so fun to arrange flowers. But you can just sort of do whatever you'd like with your leaves and your flower. Um, there's also this stamped image in the set. And you can die cut that. You can mix and match if you'd like. And then I loved these two greetings. I just had stamped a whole bunch of them from the set on different die cuts. And you can just sort of arrange however you'd like. And you can see here I've layered it on the Melon Mambo and the Bubble Bath cardstock. Just did sort of an interesting different little fun fold there. And that's how I finished off the cards. I kept them pretty simple. If, I just want to give you a tip. 
let's see, on this one, for instance, when I laid the yellow flowers on this yellow embossed background, they got totally lost. So I picked up one of the radiating stitches dies and tucked it behind the flowers. And even though it barely shows, it made all the difference in giving some separation between this yellow and this yellow. So that's just a tip. You could, you know, use any kind of a die cut, any color that you want. But that was a tip for you. So here are some other backgrounds. You could just think about embossing a whole bunch of different colors or um, making them with the baby wipe technique that I linked in my post. Anything you want, you can make this so fun. So I'm going to just quickly do the yellow because I did the yellow in two different ways. I want to show you that. And then I'll just talk briefly about the catalog, the new catalog, and then I will let you go. I I am dashing out of the house to um, drive 300 miles to Bakersfield to uh, my father-in-law's um, memorial service this weekend so I am I am going to dash after this but I just want to show you this quickly okay there's glue on my finger hang on <laughs> that was annoying so I wanted to show you on lemon lolly daffodil delight is a gorgeous combo if you just want to keep it soft and yellow. So, barely noticeable, but definitely gives some dimension to that. Let's do this one quickly, and then we'll do the Flirty Flamingo, which was kind of a surprise to me. I tried it, and I loved it. So I just wanted to show you that combo as well. The fun thing about this is you can mix and match. You can do absolutely any color combos you'd like. You could do multiple colors. You can start with white or colored cardstock, and it just gives you such a beautiful array of possibilities, I think. So look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? It gives you just a little bit of dimension. So it would look like that. It would look like that when you're done. Of course, you want to do the little speckles because I don't know about you, but I think that just real really makes it amazing. And then I'll show you the Flirty Flamingo to make this one. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the condolences. You're all so sweet. Um, let's see. Did you stamp them with the color you would be making the flowers? Oh, the greetings. I actually used, so all those ink colors I showed you, I used those to stamp a whole bunch of different greetings. And then as I assembled my cards, I just selected one that I thought looked really nice. And when in doubt, just use black or pebbled path or basic gray or something like that that will um, just allow it to be kind of neutral-ish or go with anything. So this is Flirty Flamingo. Absolutely love how this looks. Flirty Flamingo and Poppy Parade are two of my very, very, very favorite colors. And then if you pair them with Parakeet Party, oh my goodness, that just makes my heart happy. We call those patty colors around here. Look how pretty. Isn't this amazing how this looks? So then we put that on top. Isn't that fun? Look at this. How easy is this? I hope that you're all saying, oh my goodness, really? It's this easy? Yes, it's this easy, my friends. 
super duper easy. That's it. There you go. That's how you do. Well, you're going to speckle them because look, doesn't the speckling make all the difference? But that's all you need to do to get these beautiful colors. And then everything else was just sort of a variation. So um, either you can add the um, petal pink or you could do bubble bath or you could do the flirty flamingo on this and then you will get that kind of a look. Or, I mean, like mix and match, right? You can do whatever you'd like. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Tammy. You are all very kind. Um, I do not have lilies in my garden, Sue. I have tried, and uh, I just, there's some things that just don't grow well. I, I think it's partially the angle, well, not the angle of the sun, but the way that my garden is oriented you know, there's only some things that will grow in certain amounts of light and whatever. And so unfortunately, lilies are not something that I have in my garden. Let me just catch up and see if there's any other questions. Yeah, Lori, I was just saying those dyes are coming back in April, in early April. So check the online store again for those. Yes, I would still spackle the, daff the daffodil. Yes. Um... Yeah, they're coming back, Mary. Don't so don't worry. Any other questions here? Yes, you can do water painters and ink. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. I think I caught up with the questions. So if you had a question that I missed, could you retype it? I'm going to try to um, catch catch them over here on the on my tablet. I did want to just quickly just say something about the new catalog. So if you noticed on my business Facebook page, I was posting a lot from our onstage event. I was posting some of the new in colors, which are gorgeous. Aren't they beautiful? That's some of them. They're beautiful colors. Um, I was posting some of the new products, some of the new samples, and posted a picture of my boxes of my pre-pre-pre-order that onstage attendees could order. And I was bombarded with your excitement. I was so happy that you were so excited about all the new stuff. And I couldn't even keep up with the comments because you were all so excited. And I just wanted to say... Thank you to Leslie Hansen. She popped in and said, hey, guys, Patty's only one person. Give her a break here. <laughs> because I just felt like I just couldn't even keep up at one point. And I had to just yesterday afternoon, I had to just stop answering all the comments. Because, yes, I am only one person. It is only me. And so I appreciate your grace and your patience as I get these new products and I try to share them with you, but there's only one of me and there's thousands of you. So I will get to an unboxing. I will get to new samples. I will get to the inspiration samplers. I will get to it all, but I just need a little time. <laughs> and like I mentioned, I am on my way now in about 30 minutes to drive down to Bakersfield to uh, go to my father-in-law's memorial service and um i just my brain needs a little reset time and i think actually the drive will be good with my husband and son because we'll just be able to talk and um have a little downtime so i appreciate your patience in letting me have a little time here to get back to all the new products next week and in the coming month, the new catalog does not start till May 1st. We have time, my friends. I will get to it. <laughs> so thank you all for your understanding. Thank you for your um, patience with me. And I will, I will get to sharing more with you. I promise. Thank you, Robin, so much. I appreciate it. Mary is asking about the glass mat. 
we have not been told for sure. So we, as soon as I know, I will pass on the information. I honestly do not have an answer for you. So I am sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. She says, we know the new projects will be worth the wait. That is so sweet of you. <laughs> Thank you for your hugs, and thank you, everyone, everyone for your condolences. Um, oh, Jane, that's funny. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for your sweet and kind words and your patience. I appreciate all of you. Um, I was thinking maybe I should train my house sitter to go online and to uh, reply to all your comments while I'm gone, but, but uh, no time for that. So I will... <laughs> I will do it when I can. I will um, be thinking of all of you and I will get back to answering your questions as soon as I can. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see all the samples, I have everything and the supplies linked on my blog today. But as I said in my post today, I am so sorry that these dyes became unavailable just hours after I posted these cards originally. I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do about that. They will be coming back in April. So I will post when they become available again and you'll be able to order them. But for right now, I'm sorry, you'll have to just hang tight and wait for those to become available. Well, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. I will see you back next week. I will try to have some new products to share with you and some fun things. Uh, probably what I'll do is do samples and a review of the new in colors because I'm really excited about those. They're gorgeous. And I hope to share that with you next Friday. So thanks again. And I will see you all next week. Bye, everybody.